big game. It's a division game. Um, Got to go up there. It's obviously, going to be a tough environment. Um, you know, their their team that's uh, you know really really good. Um, I was with them uh, in, the, in the off season, so um, I know I know you know it's going to be a tough battle for us. But we got to come in and and be on our details and go up there and be ready to battle. So the Giants this week, talk about this matchup, a divisional game. You all got the win against Atlanta. What's key this week as you all go up to the Meadowlands? Um, I would say beating a lot of man covers. I feel like it's it's kind of a challenge to us in this receiver room because we know how much uh, Wink likes to bring pressure um, and how much they like to, to play man-to-man -man, uh, with their back half. So I feel like it's a challenge to us in this receiver room to make sure we get open, get open with some urgency for our quarterback. Um, and the looks that we get, we, we capitalize on them. Because when you play teams like this and they're bringing a lot of guys, you know, one missed tackle can lead to a big play. Uh, so I feel like that's going to be a big emphasis for us this week. And you know, hopefully we can make it happen. I was just going to ask you, is it anything receiver-wise that you all could do to help out Sam just a little bit more knowing what you're going to face this week? Yeah, I would say uh, the number one Number one thing in a relationship is to communicate. Uh, I feel like that, that's the biggest thing. Uh, we got to communicate with him, see, let him know what we're seeing, and he lets us know vice versa. Um, and then just getting open as fast as possible, honestly, because when they're bringing more than you can block, uh, numbers-wise, you know, you're going to have to get open a, a little bit quicker. Uh, things going to happen a little bit faster, especially for him. Uh, so we want to get open and, and make plays. Uh, you know, it's a divisional matchup. You know, um, those guys, you know, you know, in a, in a situation where I'm, I'm sure they really want to win. So, uh, you know, we got to expect, you know, they're going to play us hard. You know, we can't can't pay attention to their schedule. We can't pay attention to, you know, how they played against, you know, their past teams. We just got to prepare and, uh, you know, know how we want to attack them. Ryan, as far as your production and everything, how do you see yourself uh, going into the seventh week of the season? Uh, I see myself in a you know, great situation, you know, uh, just, you know, take advantage of you know, every opportunity I get on the field. And, um, you know, uh, I've been as productive as my opportunities. So uh, I just expect, you know, to you know, keep keep working, you know, keep, you know, um, grinding. And when my, when my time comes. Well, welcome to another edition of In the Minute. And when we say In the Minute, In the Minute, we're going to tell you a little bit about the Giants facing the Commanders. It's a game, hey, and we got Donna Hopkins and Donna, look here. You tell me, uh, you said something when we were speaking earlier that the Giants weren't too good, but what I told you, the Giants are good where we're bad, and that's what really scares me about this game. If you start looking at the situation, they should have won the game the other day, and they played pretty well. They have a new quarterback in there. They're running back his back. They got some new wide receiver they're going to. But one thing that really scares me about this game, Don, and you can chime in right now and tell me, is I'm afraid of our offensive line or the Washington offensive line versus their defensive line. I could have, would have, should have, Tony. As far <laughs> I as you the don't come up with that. That's all right. You, you, you'll see. <laughs> hey, could have, would have, should have, Tony, against the Buffalo Bills. Where, where the Giants almost got them, but, uh, you know, as I said, they made some stupid plays down the, the end. But, hey, this is the divisional game. When you look back at these two teams last year, Tony, up in the Meadowlands, they tied 2020, and then the Giants got them at the commander's home. I think that score was uh, 14. Well, they it was 20-something or so, but they got them in the second uh, game uh, last year. So it seems like the Giants always have the commander's numbers, Tony, as far as uh, Daniel Jones, who probably won't start this week. Tyrod Taylor is going to be the one. But what kind of uh, problems does he pose as far as uh, for this commander's defense? Because you look at Daniel Jones, he always ran circles around this defense. And Tyrod Taylor is the one that runs, too. But you talked about the offensive line and you being afraid there. This offensive line, Tony, is a concern, but talking to Eric B. Enemy out there this week, uh, the offensive line has given up 34 uh, sacks this year, which is the most in the NFL. Some of those are on Sam. Against Atlanta, Tony, four of those five sacks was on Sam. And I argue with you, Tony, he stepped into the sacks. 
But but <laughs> he stepped, I mean, you 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 tried to tell me otherwise, but he stepped into the sack, Tony. But it is a concern, uh, basically, when you look at these two teams, the one and five New York Giants, three and three commanders. This is huge for both teams because the division we talked about this finally being a strong division again. Well, when you look at it, Tony, everybody is almost like neck and neck with Philadelphia losing, Dallas barely winning. This this is in grasp as far as the division. But Tony, how do you see this playing out? You know, offensively for Sam, Eric B. Enemy said that everybody is looking for Sam to do big things, but he's doing some great little things. What's your take? Well, let's digress and go back to him stepping up into the pocket. That is what a quarterback is taught to do. You back up, you read the field, as you scan the field, if you feel pressure from the outside, you take a couple steps up. Well, the middle of our offensive line doesn't protect him well enough. Sometimes, and you're correct, it is his fault. He holds the ball too much. But sometimes he has to step up, and then he has to throw it either run because the defensive lineman is right there. So when I look at that, Eric B. Enemy is doing a great job. And what he's trying to do is substitute the short path for the running game because he knows some kind of way they got to have a short game, whereas that enabled the long game to work a little better. So that's why he's doing the short path. They're getting better, but right now, to get our running backs or get their running backs going, they need an actual running game. And what I mean is this when you go into the game, Donna, and you don't go in there and run 10 times and it doesn't look good, so you just start throwing. It seems as if that's what the commanders are doing right now. What I think they should do is a static game. Wear this defensive line down. Now, the quarterback's going to tie right will give a little bit more of speed and getting outside. Therefore, you got to keep him in the pocket. Make him work within the parameters of where your defensive linemen are. Then you control him. Barkley <clears throat> showed last week. Even against a much better defense, he still played hard. He ran hard, and he's a danger. And then you look at Waller, who came out from the Los Angeles Raiders. And this thing, a couple of years ago, he was catching 100 balls a year. Then he got they started utilizing him. So that's why I'm a little concerned more with our offensive line pertaining to their defense line, but with the overall team because they match up in our bad places where we match up in their good places. Hey, yeah, Tony. Well, well let's, dis- let's uh, look at uh, the, the Giants' defense and, and really dissect that. And looking at Howard last week, he dropped back 29 times, Tony, 14 <laughs> passes for 151 yards. That wasn't a great day, but it was those turnovers uh, that the commanders got, you know, um, in the second half. But let's look at the Giants defense, Tony. Um, They've got only five sacks on the year. They blitz a lot, which means that Sam has to get rid of the ball quicker than what he is right now. Let's break down the the Giants' defense. How do you see them that being blitzing a lot of the defense, and what does Sam have to do with a team that brings the the pressure? That means some things are going to be open in the in the secondary. And uh, Jahan Dotson said that they've got to get open quick. What does Sam have to do with a blitz that's coming at him most of the time? Because that's what the Giants do. Only five sacks on the year for them. His precision, precision, and his thoughts. And his throw have to be very quick. He can't have time to really look at, at two or three options. They do come from, they bring cornerbacks, they bring safeties, they bring linebackers, and they bring the defensive line. Therefore, this line is going to have to work. So everything has to be very, very, uh, what should I say, quickly. And what I'm saying is, if they're not going to run, but what you do when they're blitzing, and as when I played, this is what we do. Whenever you had a team come in blitzing, that's when you run the ball because when you're blitzing, again, you fans need to know this. Anytime that they're blitzing, both teams have a chance of winning on that. The defense, if they don't get there, somebody's open. But if they do get there, then it's a big play for them. So it's a 50-50. They have to take advantage of quick reads on that. Get it out. I would try to go to the middle zone because usually that person that's not on the defensive line is either going to come wide outside or up the middle. So I would go to my middle zone <clears throat> and let them clean it out first, and I drop that ball right off. I would do that two or three times to, to influence them not to blitz, and that's the way you go forward on that. But they got some key people. Kyle will have to make sure he watch them when they are blitzing. They'll give it up, 
But at the same time, they have defensive line that's capable of getting pressure. That's where I'm concerned. Hey, Tony, they said that with the Giants uh, blitzing a lot, they forced teams to check down. Talk to, uh, and, and for fans who don't know what that means, talk about that a little bit as far as the checking down, forcing teams to do that from the Giants. Yeah, when, when you have a check down, down, and what it is, the quarterback is reading certain areas of the field. Wherever the team, wherever the play was predicated to go in the vet, that's where it's going to start. Say, for instance, I'm going to hit our tight end across the middle i'm looking at that right away and then if that is not open i'm checking down at option number two that may be the right receiver doing the end out there on the right i'm looking for them and then if that's not i go to the third option which a lot of quarterbacks do not get that option but i'm checking down to each one and i may eventually get back it really and they tell a defense alignment that you need to get to the quarterback within three seconds and that's for all the time you got so a quarterback got three seconds to make a decision he can make a quick check down a quick here in the middle, back, and then maybe back, and then he has to decide if he's going to throw it or run it. So that's what the check down is. That's going to another another position on the field, seeing if that player is open. And the only way you can do that is you have good pass protection and not a great pass rush. <laughs> well, you know what? They got their work cut out because this is a, 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 a team that Sam is going to have to – That you know, teams have looked at Sam – and they know that, hey, you know what? This guy holds on to the ball a long time. Uh, this is what we have to do on him. But Eric B. Enemy said that most, you know, the, the Giants are not bad. You look at their records, Tony, and you look at who the Giants have played with that one and five. They haven't had an easy schedule. The Commanders, on the other hand, I believe that have the easier schedule so far because look at this. Giants play Buffalo, Miami, Seattle, San Francisco, Arizona. When you look at the teams that the Giants have played and, you know, their record and everything, they, they haven't been bad as far as some of the games that they've lost. A few they have gotten blown out, but they've been in games like the one last week. But let's talk about this commander's offense before we go to the commander's defense, Tony. Uh, this week, everybody was talking about Jahan Dotson. Um, you know, this is his second year. He's not getting the production that he had last year and i don't think that the wide receivers in general are getting the the production with that caliber of talent there but dotson is the one tony he's only got had 17 catches for 140 yards uh one touchdown targeted 28 times in your mind how do you keep upbeat yeah i'm i would say i'm my biggest critic you know i i'm the one who gets down on myself about the drops the most uh, and different things like that. But, you know, you got to stay positive. Uh, you you got to come with a positive mindset every time. And that's why I have such a great support system around me, the guys in my room, a great quarterback, a uh, true leader. And, then, you know, when I go home, I, I got a beautiful family I go home to. And, you know, they give me positive reinforcement all the time. So, you know, I got a great, a great group of people around me uh, who are always going to bring me up and bring the best out of me. Uh, you know, what do you see that's going on there? in general with with his production is he is it sam more so uh because he likes to target logan thomas the tight end but jo Jahan dotson's uh production has dropped this year a lot of times down whatever quarterback whomever he practices with in practice it's safe for instance he's the second string him and that second string receiver him and that second string uh tight end they will have familiarity with each other. Therefore, when they get into a game situation, they start looking for those players. We already know who the number one receiver is on here, so they might as well get used to that. We got two and three, we got three in a row. But what may be happening right now is Howell is getting used to being second string, which he was last year, and he probably worked with this receiver every day. So naturally, when he gets out there, he's going to work with that receiver. As far as Dobson, he got to earn those catches because that's one – portion of the team. What are you talking that, about? You got to earn the catches, hey, Tony. You well stopped. Well <laughs> stopped. It's just like this. I'm having a hard time downing with the running game, and i tell you why. No, don't go there yet. Let's stay on the receivers yet because I'm coming up with the receivers. talking receiver off, Hey, you got to be versatile. You can't be short-sighted. Hey, no, Tony. Like, we got we got, like a a dissect. <laughs> we got to dissect. We got to dissect the wide receiver. What I'm saying is Dotson got to get in and prove that he's a go-to guy. He got to get that quarterback's confidence, as McLaren has, and the other players, and he got to play with that quarterback for a while. Last year against the Giants, uh, he was one of the main targets in everything. Mm -hmm. uh, 
in, in the Giants game, Dotson had nine catches uh, for – he was targeted 15 times, almost more in that one game than he has all this season for 159 uh, yards and two touchdowns. So he was the go-to guy last year, but you had Teller Heineke. You had a different quarterback. But you you we were talking about Dotson, but, Tony, in actuality, none of the, the uh, wide receivers have had a stellar uh, season so far. Terry McLaurin. 342 yards, Curtis Samuels, 285, and Logan Thomas, 180, 185. And I told you as far as Dotson, the 140. But but I just think that, you know, uh, w- with Sam right now being comfortable with a new offense, offensive line and everything, those receivers are open, Tony. Even Dotson, I know he had a few drops and everything that should have been in his hands. But I just don't think that he's seeing Dotson as much as they did last year. Well, being open and being able to stand in the pocket is two different things. And when this quarterback is being rushed from two different sides with people that are, have broken loose from their blocker, then he has no time but to make one decision before he even try to check down. So, therefore, that's what's happening right now. But one thing we all have to be cognizant of, as you said, new coordinator, new quarterback, new thought process. The enemy is bringing in that thought process from Kansas City. Always make that tight end a big part of it because you open up that middle zone and that gives your receivers chances to do it, go into that middle zone after a while too. So that's what he's doing. Plus, as I said, down it all is going to be pertaining to how well they can run the ball. And that's not just for this game. This is for the year. And any team, I've been on a couple of Super Bowl teams. You've been around five or six of them. And it always have been an issue. Can they run the ball? And every one of them that has gone, when we were the Marshall Redskins, we always had a big runner in there. That would always messes up defense. I, when I played defense in, in the NFL, the one thing we hated is for a team to run on us early, get a lead, and then run on us late. You can't control the game when they can do that. That's why it is is imperative that they get this running game together, get these linemen. And one thing I think, Donna, I think if you get those linemen together, that's going to make it a lot easier for them to make the transition to going to being NFL offensive linemen. And the way you do that is you put them in the pits and you run that ball. And you run it till they don't want to run it, and the other team don't want you to run it. But that's what you have to do. It's a dirty business. It's hard, but it's fair. It's a dirty business, Tony said. Brian Robinson on the year, Tony, 302 yards after six games. Sinquan Barkley on the other side of the ball. How do you see these two running backs as far as overall? I know you said that each team, I think, had to run the, the ball. Um, but uh, and Barkley was saying about the trade deadline coming up on October the 31st, he wants to stay with the Giants. Who has the edge right there, Tony? Because Washington doesn't run the ball enough, but who has the edge running ball, uh, running the ball and quarterback wise? Well, you answered your, your point because Washington doesn't run the ball enough. I think if they ran Robinson more, that he would be even more of a factor in the game. They have two different kind of running backs and they utilize them them both well but when you go over there to new york you know that barkley he's the he's the kid bell he's the bell carrier he's going to go all the way and he's going to give it to you all all day long so what you have to do is you look at right now they got the edge there i don't know if they have the edge on quarterback because you got two young quarterbacks is playing in their first five or six games or whatever the quarterback is playing that tight but he's played before but i mean for this team so I would just let the quarterback be a wash right now. I go right back to the offense and defensive lines. That's where the game is going to be won and lost. Both teams have good special people with like receivers and running backs. Both people have quarterbacks. I mean, both teams have quarterbacks that are capable, but it comes down to those two lines, the offense and defensive line on each side. They will tell us which, who's going to win that game. Whichever every one of them can dominate, that's who's going to win. How much did that help by just being able to observe a little bit from the sideline? Uh, it helped a lot, honestly. You know, like Coach Revere said, I need a reset, and I think that worked out perfectly. And hopefully, 
come in this week and just get better each day. When you looked at some films from previous games, were you able to see things a little clearer of this is where I can improve some things? Uh, I was, it wasn't me just like, you know, busting coverage or things like that. It's plays that I've made my whole life, and I just got to go out there and make plays when the time comes. Hey, Casey, um, got the New York Giants this week. Um, you look at the record, he's like, okay, they haven't won many games. But talk about this matchup because the Giants seem to always have this commander's numbers. What's the key defensively this week? Yeah, I mean, you just can't ever look at the record, right, especially in the NFL. Like, you just never know, right? Everyone has talent. Everyone can play. Everyone's coaches can scheme up. So, you know, we've had a great rivalry with them. It's always been close. You know, they got the better of us last year. Um, they're always a tough team to play. So, you know, we just got to come in with the same mentality and, you know, try to get that perfect performance on defense, which I think we're building to, but we haven't gotten yet. Uh, last week, you look at the Atlanta game, this defense was basically able to put some things together, got some key turnovers at the end. Um, what did you see last week that you all can carry into this week? You know, I think we just played with a lot of grit and toughness and we strained. So if we can do that and, you know, continue to try to get turnovers and then just strain for 60, I think we'll be in a good spot. Uh, you know, they got things that they like to do, you know what I'm saying? I feel like both quarterbacks is mobile, you know, both can, both can throw the ball and we just go out there and play our game. Giants coming up this week, a divisional game, coming off a, a win against the Atlanta Falcons. Talk to me about this game against the Giants and how huge it is, not even looking at the record. Um, it's a huge game. Uh, it's, a, it's a division game, and we know that they're going to uh, give it their all, every play, um, every snap out there. So we just got to bring the same intensity. Um, we got to keep preparing this week, you know, how we know we can and just prepare the best we can to be ready for the game. But just talk about this defense. Uh, finally was able to put together a, a good game plan against the Falcons. Uh, what's the key against the, uh, the Giants and also starting fast? Um, the key is being consistent. Um, we know what we can do. Um, we know the type of players that we have. And we know the big plays that we can make. So just carrying that over from the Falcons game and carrying over for the rest of the season. Um, just being active out there, um, straining to get to the ball, um, making sure we stand up on our details, and just making sure we're out there playing for each other. You know, trusting each other that everybody's going to do their job, and at the end of the day, we'll come out with the victory. Talking about doing their jobs, talk about the linebacker play, how important it's going to be against the Giants because Barkley, they've got a running back uh, and looking at him and, and also what the quarterbacks like to do. Yeah, um, our linebacker play is going to be very important, um, making sure that we get the defense um, set up, making sure we're doing what we do, and just making sure we're being the quarterback of the defense, um, making sure we're keeping intensity um, through everybody and uh, just flying around and making plays. Well, Tony, talking about the Giants, uh, the Giants averaging a, a, a league worst 11.8 points per game. Uh, they have a hard time scoring, and their offense hasn't scored in the first half. Now moving on to the commander's defense. You know, they've had, as I said, a hard time with the New York Giants. They don't have to face Daniel Jones this uh, time, but Tyra Teller is no uh, walk in the park either. The defense, finally, Tony, against the Falcons played you know, a pretty good game, uh, but it was the forced turnovers at the end that, that helped this team. Defensive front facing the Giants and, and Taylor, how do you see that playing out? I look at that with whichever team forces their will early. And when I say force that will, that is when you have a defensive line that said, you're not going to run the ball on me. That's when you have an offense and I say, I am going to run on you. So it's going to come down to whichever team forces their will early and stick to their game plan. I look at that being a game where the defensive ends will have to keep Tyrell inside the tackle. Don't let him get outside and have freedom to scan over the field. But at the same time, those two big middle guys got to get pushing. They got to push him out and try to push him where you have to try to get outside. Then you push him into a sack. Constant pressure is very important on, on him as well. So when I look at who has the advantage, Quarterback-wise, as I said, I think it's the same um, offense. Their offense may be a little better than ours right now because of the line. But defensively, Their both offense people, is not better than ours, Tony. Their offense is not minute. better than the commanders. They've got a beat-up offensive line right now, and they've got a lot of injury on their offensive line. They do, but How can I, I you was very, say that they're a little you better know, you than think I was quite but you know what was really surprising? They put that young man that had just got there after two days in the other day 
at right tackle, and he did a pretty good job. I watched him from that point on. That's why right. I say that they they must have a pretty good offensive line system because they still they ran ran the ball well. And then you got to look at Buffalo. Again, they're it's only averaging eleven point eight points per game, Tony. Yeah, but we've given up thirty four sacks, so you can't say <laughs> you can't hey. you can't take only out of there because we're the only team that did that. And I, what I said, every factor counts. Maybe they only have eleven points, but look how many points they held Buffalo to, and look how many Buffalo put on the Commanders. So you have to look at every game. And you asked a question earlier about around the, what's happening with the NFC East. People, as we said, have figured out Philadelphia a little bit. They know that the quarterback is going to have to be the key to everything. He can run it. He can throw it. He can do it all. But if you bottle him in and make him make some critical decisions, he can make mistakes as well. When you go to Dallas, all they are is America's team on paper. That's all they are. That's they, they, that propaganda has been going on. They They've never be been America's team. team. They've never been my – and I'm from America, and that's why I say that. And they look yeah, at – I told you about them – if you run right at them, they are nothing but a bunch of skirts. So, you know, I'm not even going to go there with them. So, and then and the Giants, tough, gritty, may not have all the, the talent, but at the same time, they got the gut. Same thing with the Commanders. The one thing we are just saying about the Commanders, how can they have given up 64, uh, 34 sack? And how can they not get it, it do as well on our defensive line as we thought? Yeah, because they, they got 19 sacks over on the defensive side. But that's what that, that they're right on key down. And when we had our keys, the one thing they told the defense, and that that that, that you want to hold the team to 17 points and you want to get three sacks. So if you do the math, they've played six games, and that means they got 18 sacks, they got 19 sacks, so they're right on key there. Well, Tony, the, the Giants, going back to them, the offensive line haven't had the same starters all season long. So, you know, they've had some uh, major injuries along their offensive line, had to sign some new ones that were on the couch, period, I think. Um, but, you know, it's going to come down to Eric B. Enemy talked about this. Jack Dorio talked about that this, this week is this commander's team have to figure out how to start uh, fast each and every week. They start one week fast, then they – they start the next week slow, and they haven't been able to put back-to-back -back solid games together uh, this season. So this is a, a measuring stick for this commander's team to see can they come out after, you know, they'll lose a game, and then they know that they have to come back and win one. But this is the divisional game. This is key. As the Giants said, they only lost one divisional game, so they know that they're still in the hunt, even at one and five. We, we're we not in, in the middle of the season yet, so – they could come on in the end, but I always say I can't worry about the the Giants. You got to worry about this Commanders team and which team is going to show up, Tony. So you got the last words as far as what it's going to take and how do you see this plan out this week for this Commanders team? You know, I have reiterated and I do it once again: run the ball, stay with the run, no matter how bad it looks for you. The only way you get out of that run, speaking of the Commanders, if you get 21 to nothing, the 21 points behind, then you have to go to the air. But as long as it's 14 or less, you run the ball. You got to be tough. You got to force your will. And that's what this team is learning right now. You do have new parts of it, but each person has to do what they do as well. Defensively for this team, do your job. Don't worry about other people's job or who's back or who's not back. Just do your job and it'll work out for you. We have to get that middle zone, which everybody in the NFL seems to be utilizing. Got to cover that middle zone up and keep those tight ends out and those big wide receivers. For the cornerbacks, we have to – they, and I keep, I'm, I'm not playing a down, so I need to stop that we stuff. But what <laughs> they have to do – You want to, though. <laughs> I sure would. I'd like to. Just for one game, get that check. That, that one game check probably was as much as I made the whole year. <laughs> so you know what you look at the defense in the back. You can't bite on the play action pass real quickly because if you bite on that, that means that they're going to get behind you. But at the same time, you can't play the run and not be cognizant that they'll throw the ball. So they got to just be a cornerback. They got to be like Daryl Green. You got a short memory and you got a quick trigger and you're going to take care of whatever you need to do, whatever they do. And that's what football and any sports is about. It's about which team can figure the other one out and which one can be more physical, but most and foremost, 
who will force their will. And for the commanders, their will needs to be, we're going to run the ball. Speaking of run the ball, I'm going to run out of here now because I, I'm kind of fired up. See, see, can I work out a little bit? Maybe mm-hmm. I can take this beard off and, and, and dye my hair or something, and, and they'll give me a game because I can use it right now. But one thing about you fans, you come back each and every week, and we'll have some new stuff for you. But like Don and I always say, we never say goodbye. We say in the minute. In the minute.